So we are back at the lockdown camp. As you can see, just over there was the picnic bench. And if you watched our series from last March when we were when COVID first hit, this is the place that we came to. But there was um there was no cars and now it's really busy. See, there's loads of people coming up because it's quite a nice place to go for a walk. I've also got my solar panel blanket out as well as the solar panel on the roof. So we're getting we're getting 220 watts of power right now, which is pretty sweet. Right, let's go and explore the lake. So when I filmed those daily vlogs, this was the uh, this was the little hill I had to come up to get signal to upload every night. And uh, yeah, it kept us fit. We tried to do this three times a day. So it is a bit of a steep hill. The views, well look, it's pretty nice up here, I do miss it. Okay, we have reached the end of our walk, avalanche sign. And if you think these are for show, sure, well, look, it's come down the hill there. This next part of the walk, it's a little bit exposed and the, uh, the hills are quite steep, so it's not a safe place to walk anyway. So we're going to go back down between the trees the way we came. Rupert, off, off, get off there, follow the signs. So yeah, back down the hill now. Right, welcome back to Chef Campus episode four. This week I am gonna be cooking a camper van classic, a risotto. Now, if you've never cooked a risotto before, now is the week to learn because once you learn the basics and fundamentals of a risotto, you can then cook loads of different types of risottos. There's hundreds, thousands of combinations to be made. Um, this week I'm keeping it regional, Alpine region, and almost with the theme as well. It's quite cold. The mountains are really misty and we can't see anything in front of us. Driving on the roads is pretty dangerous. So we've drove down the valley into this kind of lower level, lower level area. We're about 700 meters and um, we're just going to cook next to this lake. Right, the risotto this week is a uh, wild set mushroom with Comte cheese. Now the set mushrooms are kind of harvest from these areas in the Alpine um, forest, you know, late, late summer, kind of early autumn. And uh, they really are a French mushroom and everyone's kind of like obsessed with them. If you go to the market towns when they're being picked in that season, and you'll find them being like fried there in front of you and you can just get a plate of them on their own and people go mad for them. Um, for a risotto, I always, always, always use dried mushrooms. I never use the fresh mushrooms. And the reason for that is that these dried mushrooms are gonna make a perfect stock to layer the risotto with flavor. And also, dried mushrooms you can just keep in your cupboard and you can keep them there for like months, maybe a year, I don't know, ages. And uh, you don't have to carry anything fresh, so it's a good store cupboard to have for me um, for when you don't know what to cook that evening or if you want to stay one extra night in a wild camping spot. Pull these out the back of your cupboard, get some dry rice and away you go. Uh, to serve with the set mushrooms, we've gone for a really local cheese, one of my favourite cheeses, it's Comte cheese. Now this is made on the borders of um, France and Switzerland in the Alps. It's one of the most heavily produced cheeses actually in this region, so you will find this in your supermarket, it's quite common and quite popular. It's got a really earthy, nutty taste to it, which goes perfect with the set mushrooms and for this risotto, it just goes magnificent. Um, if I just quickly talk you through what else we've got, so it's about 40 grams of dried mushrooms there. 
That's probably quite a lot for two people. I would say you probably need about 15 grams per person for dry mushrooms. For the cheese, as much as little as you like, I'm gonna be putting in quite a bit, but I would say about 50 grams of cheese. I've got a couple of shallots, a couple of cloves of garlic. I've got about 75 grams of risotto rice per person. Um, usually it's about 60 to 70, but I've gone 75. Now what I usually do is cook extra and then make arancini with it, but I'm not doing that this week. Um, what else have I got? I've got some white wine because this cooking series just wouldn't be the same without me drinking white wine, it would seem. I haven't done this on purpose, it's completely accident. I've got some salt and pepper, some butter and some olive oil. Um, and that's it. So let's make a start on this woodland sep mushroom and comte cheese risotto. Let's go. Okay, so first step, I've got uh, about 750 ml of boiling hot water. I'm gonna drop in those mushrooms. Now, if you've got time and you're spending all your day at camp, then do this as your first job of the day and kind of leave them at room temperature for as long as possible. The longer you leave the mushrooms at room temperature, the more flavor you're gonna get. You're gonna get, but if you're in a, not in a rush, but if you're in a bit of a cooking it straight off, then just pop it in some boiling water. About 20 minutes on those and then you're gonna have a magnificent mushroom stock with the dried mushrooms that are just gonna plump up and get back to their normal size, which we'll then use in the risotto. Whilst that's kind of going away, I'm just gonna start with the risotto itself. Next job is to chop these shallots, chop the garlic in the pan with some olive oil, simmer for about five to 10 minutes and get some flavor going in there. Join me in a minute. Okay, it's really, really cold out here and that's got gloves on and my, um, my hands and fingers are really cold and numb. Which means if you chop in a shallot, then you need to be very careful because you can quite easily take your finger off. But the good news is, if you do take your finger off, you probably won't feel it because it's so freaking cold anyway. So yeah, be careful using knives in cold weather. Your knife goes on, usually is good. is the garlic. Now I have gone in with two cloves of garlic, which is quite a lot, but I like garlic. But um, yeah, if it was just two of you, maybe go for one big clove, depending on how much you like it. A couple of minutes on that. And our mushroom stock is pretty much there now. We're ready with that. So we can get a move on. about two thirds of my mushrooms out with a mushroom stock and I've just roughly like chopped them nothing too fancy here we're not trying to finely dice them or anything like that just making them so they're not too big I'm gonna drop them into the pan with the shallots and the garlic and what that will do is start to layer the pan with flavor because what we want to do is build up that base level of flavor in the pan before we drop the rice in so as soon as the rice hits the pan it's going to absorb that really intense flavor so what we do here is literally just cook quite a lot of the moisture out of the mushrooms, mix them with the shallots and the garlic, and you'll get a really nice earthy smell from the pan as you do this. And then after about five or 10 minutes, we'll drop in the risotto rice and I'll show you what to do then. Okay, we've just kind of dried off those mushrooms in the pan, sauteed them off a little bit with the shallots and the garlic. That's gonna produce a really incredible flavor in the base of that pan. I've added some salt and some pepper to season it. And now I'm gonna go in with the risotto rice, about 75 grams per person. And what we do now is we just stir this around with all of that base mix. And each kind of layer, each kind of grain of rice is just gonna have a nice little layer of flavor on top of it from the mushrooms and the shallots and the garlic. Give that a good stir. Keep the heat on medium, let's just double check. Yeah, that will do. Now's the fun part. We go in with about a glass of wine. We keep the heat on medium and we let that wine completely evaporate. So that pan needs to be bone dry by the time we're ready to start the next phase. And that will just intensify the flavor as a base. It's all about building up layers of flavor 
with a risotto. It's not about trying to chuck it all in whenever, it's about putting it in in a set routine so you get that flavour and everything you put in at the start, you get in at the end. So yeah, join me in, in a bit once this evaporates, about 10 minutes I reckon. That wine has completely evaporated and as you can see, it's getting pretty dry in there now but already the starch is starting to trigger the creaminess of the risotto. Now the risotto's stirring them kind of releases that starch and gets the texture as you would know, the creamy texture of it. Some people put a bit of cream in there, a bit of extra butter, that's fine. Like don't lose sleep if you want a bit of cream in your risotto, that's absolutely all right. I try not to lose sleep over the naysayers about this sort of stuff, just do whatever you like. But for me, I'm just gonna keep it like that for now. Right, it's time to start adding the mushroom stock. Now, you, you'd usually kind of drain this in a colander and a sieve and kind of leave the bottom bits because there might be some grit of the wild mushrooms. But all, all I'm gonna do is just leave a little bit in the bottom and pour it gently. So we're gonna go in with about a quarter and you might see the odd mushroom just pop in. And then we just keep stirring and keep adding the stock. It's that simple, a risotto is a really easy dish. Just requires a bit of effort on the stir in front. My risotto has now absorbed all of that beautiful mushroom stock. And so it's now pretty much there. The rice is a little bit al dente, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of butter, about 30 grams of butter, and then I'm gonna go in with the Comte cheese. I've probably got about 75 grams of cheese, but as much or as little as you like, I I like it with quite a bit of Comte. It's not as strong as Parmesan, so you need to, you need to compensate for that a little bit. And all we're gonna do now in the final few stages of this cook is literally just stir that in and let it melt. Just let it jump in and mellow together ready for a bit of plating up. We're gonna put in a couple of sprigs of uh, thyme. So I'll go in with some loose leaves to begin with, and then we're gonna garnish it with the thyme as well. Now, if you are plant-based, i.e. vegan, obviously you can skip the butter, you can skip the cheese. I would say probably go in with the thyme, uh, maybe some Marmite. Uh, if you can get hold of a kind of a, a, a vegan balsamic, I'd probably go in with that as well, just so you've got a bit of acidity to liven it up. But this is an easy dish for all if you've got vegetarians, vegans, and if you've got an extra special treat. So the last time I cooked this was New Year's Eve and I was cooking for some friends who invited us over. And uh, I, I did a really nice woodland risotto, but I popped a bit of woodland um, pigeon on the top of pigeon breast and it just went together really well. So that's another option if you wanna cook it for Valentine's or cooking it extra special, go with a bit of pigeon on top. Okay, here we have my wild mushroom sep and Comte cheese risotto. Garnished with a few shavings of Comte and a couple of sprigs of thyme. That's a delicious dish and that's one you can make at any time on the road. Learn a risotto and it opens up a door of possibilities. I'm gonna tuck into this now because I'm absolutely freezing.